please forgive me if I make mistakes today. But today's topic is about AI ops. Uh, how many of you here know about DevOps or cloud? Okay, that's great. So I work as a DevOps engineer as well, and this is something new. With rise of AI and ML, companies are now shifting to AI ops. You might have heard terms about uh, FinOps, DevSecOps, DevOps, and so on. So today we are going to be learning about AI ops and how it can help you. What are different tools? We will also look at some interesting case studies to understand how companies are actually using AI ops to save money. This is something about me. I am a DevOps consultant. I work as a freelance DevOps consultant, but I also, but I also have my own company named as Cloud Champ Solutions, where I offer clouds and DevOps services to companies. I have a YouTube channel where I teach cloud and DevOps. Uh, it has around like 139,000 subscribers, not updated here, but yeah. Uh, and I am also a HashiCorp ambassador, the company that creates Terraform. I'm also a Docker captain, a sync ambassador, and AWS community builder. This is my social. If anyone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn or wants to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, can take a picture and or scan this. Okay, let's learn about AI ops today. Uh, so imagine, before I go on to this slide, I work as a DevOps, so my day-to-day -day job is to make sure applications work faster, make sure that they are not, uh, they're secured, they are scalable. So imagine you're working in a company and someday your critical business application suddenly crashes, right? Your manager is not happy, your CEO is not happy, and you're losing a lot of money. So this is a very common scenario in most of the startups and uh, companies who don't implement DevOps properly. If this is the case, you will lose a lot of money, right? So there's going to be a war room, companies, CEOs will ask you to start working on this issue and start troubleshooting it faster. So let's say this is you trying to diagnose uh, what the problem is and uh, because you are a human and you might or might not have much knowledge about your systems, it might take a lot of time, right? You try to uh, restart your servers, you try to delete some things to make it work, but if you don't have much knowledge, obviously it will take a lot of time, which will make you lose a lot of money, right? So you go ahead, try to do more testing, more uh, diagnosing, going through the logs manually. And if you are someone who works into DevOps or in operations, you will know how difficult it is to go through the logs and to find out the real problem, right? So uh, this is a common scenario and the things that we faced every day. And after a lot of troubleshooting, hopefully it might work or it, you have to like uh, spend more time. So let's say it's, it's working now. So the problems we face here is, if you work in DevOps, you'll get a lot of alerts depending on how you set up your observability. If you have uh, metrics for your servers, for your databases, there are going to be a lot of, lot of alerts. So this is a bigger problem. And most of us, like we at CloudChamp Solutions, whenever we set up observability for a company, we try to mitigate or keep the alerts as low as we can to make sure we are focusing on the uh, important alerts that are responsible or actually beneficial for the company. So this is one problem where you have a lot of alerts for your application. Second problem, whenever your application is down, there is going to be loss of cost. There is going to be, uh, customers are not going to be happy. So there can be a chance where your customers are going to move to your competitor. Third problem is, as a human, human make mistake, insani galti karta hai, uh, as we say. So if you are a human, obviously you might face problems or you might make mistakes. The solution to this is, AI ops. So what is AI ops? Let's understand. So AI ops uses AI and machine learning to understand your data and to make sure that you solve your problem faster. This is Gartner's definition of AI ops. Uh, Gartner says AI ops combines big data and machine learning to automate IT operations process. All of you here know about big data, right? And also machine learning. So I also explain you how this works, what are key components into AI ops, how companies actually use AI ops and how, how things happen. So these are some key components or you can say pillars of AI ops. It starts with data ingestion. So you have different servers, you have different databases, different systems, which will, sh uh, pull, which will push data, right? So you're going to, you're going to get a lot of uh, logs, metrics, traces, important information which you might store in a particular storage, maybe S3 bucket or some other storage solution. So you collect data, you then store that data into a large volume of structured or unstructured data. Then you run machine learning and analytics on it to understand 
what is the problem or common issues that we face, right? After that, we will make sure that we are only looking into important alerts that are responsible or beneficial for our company. Lastly, when uh, the main thing is we don't want to just understand what is the problem. We also want AI to automatically solve it, right? So the next two steps are finding out the root cause analysis and also understanding how to automatically solve this whenever a DevOps team is not online. So this is the actual process. Uh, and the three steps, if we like short it down to three steps, it collects the data, understands through machine learning, and lastly, act on it to automatically solve the problem next time it occurs. So the machine is going to uh, learn from the mistakes, and it will know what to do or what to uh, change to make sure it works. Now, here are some interesting case studies from big companies who are already using AI ops. Uh, Netflix, a very popular streaming platform, uses AI to automatically scale their servers. So yesterday, there was a talk about cloud and DevOps by other speaker who would also mention this. But Netflix uses AI a lot of, like, at different places. Netflix are very good at using cloud. Uh, they use it f to automatically scale their servers depending on the load coming in. So they have saved around $1.5 million annually doing uh, this. Next is JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan used Splunk. Splunk is a very popular observability tool. Uh, JP Morgan uses Splunk to reduce false alert. If you, like, I'm not trying to stress much about it, but this is a very common problem where companies get a lot of alerts and they spend a lot more time, which they should be spending on creating the product. So this is a very uh, common use case on how you can reduce alert using AI ops. Splunk is one of the example, but there are a lot more tools which we are going to be looking at in the next slides. And then we have Etsy. I hope everyone knows about Etsy. It's another uh, very popular shopping product, you can say. They also use uh, AI ops to reduce their mean time to remittation for two hours to 15 minutes using Dynatrace. Dynatrace, again, is an observability tool. Similarly, Airbnb uses Dynatrace, again, to reduce their uh, bugs. Zomato, Indian brand, uses AI ops to make sure they place their agents at the right spots to uh, enable faster deliveries. And lastly, we have TCS. I included these two to, because these are two companies that we are very familiar with. Uh, and TCS uses AI to accelerate their product development by 20%. So you can see this is a pattern now. This is not the future. It's uh, something happening today. So companies should be adopting AI for their uh, applications. Next, let's look at some stats. So according to Gartner here, the AI ops market is going to grow up to 19.93 billion up by 2026, which obviously would be like a lot more when we go into 26. Uh, then there is another metric here where we can get 157% ROI if you use this AI in our product. And lastly, 80% uh, faster resolution if you use AI. Here there are some uh, important or maybe like common AI tools, observability tool that uses AI in, so we have Splunk, Datadog, Service now. Dynatrace, New Relic, MOOCstop, uh, Big Panda, and PagerDuty. Most of them are paid, obviously, but there are also other options uh, which you can use to understand how AI uses, how observability tool uses AI. So here is the name. This is what they are used for, and these are the companies who use them. Who use them. So we have Cisco using Splunk, Airbnb using Datadog that we saw already, and so on. You can take a picture if you want to like uh, read about this later on. Now, this is another case study that is uh, very popular, and I read this in a blog, so I tried to add this in my slide. Vodafone, uh, which is the mobile company, uses, had a very big problem where they were not able to manage the global network and they were facing a lot of issues. That's when they use this MOOCstop. MOOCstop is what we saw here. Uh, it's a automated event correlation and incident management tool. So they use this, which resulted them to uh, increase Faster, like fast, faster solutions and uh, reduce in the network downtime. These are some best practices when using AI ops. Obviously, you need to make sure that you're putting correct data so you get correct results. Whenever you use AI ops, uh, make sure you follow these best practices. With with new tools coming in, like DeepSeek, which was very popular a few days back, is now banned in some countries because it does not follow policies correctly. So you need to make sure that you're using best practices. You are putting correct data you are defining uh, prompts or you are defining actions properly so that it can give you accurate results, right? Uh, for job roles, obviously, we are all looking 
uh, we are all concerned about this. What jobs can be seen in the future? So we have uh, jobs like AI ops engineer, which is a combination of DevOps who uses AI. So all the tools that you saw, a person who knows all these tools could be uh, could could work as an AI ops engineer in companies. This is a small range, but obviously the pay range would be different, and it could be more depending on the company you're working for. Data scientist is again an uh, emerging role, and lastly we have cloud DevOps engineer. So these are some job roles you could expect with the AI ops market growing. So these are some references I took the uh, I took references from these slides. If you can, if you want to read more, you can always take a screenshot and read from the blogs here. So I completed my slide very quick because I speak fast. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. You talked about a lot of companies here who are using AI ops and all, right? So that's if you're aware of okay. what exactly they are using internally is what I think they are looking forward. For example, uh, I wanted to know that as well, but they don't release this data on the blogs. All I know is what, like, obviously every company uses AI. The first startup that I worked was also using AI. I don't have any. And I'm not asking you to get their okay, secret okay. sauces. I'm saying, what are the best practices in AI which you think about using the generative AI kind of tools and all that? Which usually people, you know, in for example, you might be writing some blog somewhere, right? And maybe okay. handle some. You are already part of DevOps. One of the best practices. Sorry to interrupt you. One of the best practices is never to share. Like people do this often when interns work in a company. They try to put down all the code, which might include some secrets and stuff, on the prompt to make it easier for the AI model to write the code. That could be one of the best practice. Is Does this answer your question? To be honest, no. Uh, yeah, please repeat once again. I'll try again. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm checking it out. For example, um, you were talking about AI ops means inclusion of AI technologies in your operations. Mm -hmm. And you are part of the DevOps team here, right? For example, yes. think from that perspective. If you will need to look into, for example, very less um, false you know, positives and all that, and correlation you talked about, you mentioned about the noise reductions and all that. What exactly you would be doing it if you know all those AI skills and all that? Okay. I just tried to rephrase my question about what exactly the best practices that people should start thinking, irrespective of going for Datadog and Dynatrace. If I need to implement something using generative AI. One of the examples I could give you is uh, we were working for a company which had too many alerts, uh, and we used to get a lot of alerts on the Slack, and developers or DevOps engineers were more focused on the alerts, which l wasted a lot of time for us, right? So we tried to lower it down, and this is what AI ops can help us to do it. We can make sure that we are solving the right problems which are actually helpful for the business. So using AI ops, you can train your AI models in a way where if something which is very common and occurs often, you can train them to automatically solve it rather than you as a human interacting or solving it. Okay, thank you. I can give you examples later on. Yeah, I we can, can show take, you. We can discuss more yeah. offline, yeah, thank you. I hope there's no more questions. Okay. <laughs> Hey, hi. Uh, so my question is like about like in DevOps, like generally uh, we do the edge deployments also. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh, so I'm coming from the manufacturing uh, or like uh, industries where we have the multiple edge deployment, like the computer visions and all these things. But uh, I want to know from your sides, like how the AI ops can we help me uh, to solve your problems with the edge deployments of your any kind of things. Like, it all depends on your use cases. And Anything your like uh, like. You're talking about AI ops is kind of a IT like which help you into the solving your locks and all, right? So, so what? Okay, I'll ask you a question now. What operations do you do on a day-to-day -day basis, which is taking a lot of time for you? Uh, so, so normally, uh, what happens to be the uh, when your uh, models will retrain on the new data and the, anything is going to be deployed on your edge, some kind of a problem is happening under the edge part. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, what we have to be take care of with the AI ops, like what problem did you face? It's like deployment on the edge part, like if we are using the NVIDIA Jets and you know, anything. Like. Uh -huh. So where, how to solve that, any kind of uh, deployments and... Uh, Not thing. everything needs to, to be... Any, are you using any automated solutions or tools? Yeah, so we generally use like Azure DevOps kind of things to be okay. deployed on the Jets and, and all. And it's not working for you? Sorry? Is it working for you or not working It is you? working. Sometimes it gets like uh, uh, breaks between your network calls and all these things. Okay. I'll have to check this out. Obviously, I don't know much about this. Please, 
<laughs> okay, we'll let him go for now. <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Thank you, uh, Nasirullah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I there? had. Yeah, 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 sir. Go on. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, one I had last. a question. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you have mentioned like uh, to to some extent it auto resolves issues. Mm -hmm. So in your experience so far, how mm -hmm. much it has how much percentage uh, it has been able to uh, remove human from the loop? I'll say around like twenty percent or so. Yeah, because Not certain much. issues cannot Co be auto resolved. Like Obviously, yeah. I used to be a PL SQL developer ten years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At that time, if an issue comes in some job, we had to. Delete, delete certain certain data and then start the job. So those things I I don't think that these agents can do. Yeah, next thing that uh, the previous speaker talked about the AI agents, you could actually train them, but using there are some use cases that obviously you cannot uh, ask AI or auto resolve it. But you can't but ask them to play with up production data, right? Obviously, yeah, no. Yeah. You have to obviously test it out, and if it's working for you, then you move it into production. Yeah, that's right. I I'm talking on production only. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank okay, you guys. You guys thank have you, been a lovely you, audience. Thank you, Mr. Chaudhary. Thank you. Please, big round of applause for him.